Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here in sunny Dubai, where you can't quite tell because the hotel's quite dark, but it is sunny outside. That's very light, Shane, on me. It feels like it's sunny. Hey, man, you're in the spotlight now. You've got the biggest fight of your career against Regis Progre. Let's just jump straight into it. Um, you told me that there was a wee bit of back and forth at breakfast this morning. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? No, it was yesterday morning, but... Uh, yesterday morning. Uh, do you know what? He, he, he came over and... He just said, I hope you're ready, hope you're ready, hope you're ready. And uh, I just said, I hope you make fucking weight. Never mind. And he said, I'll make weight, I'll make weight. You know what Americans are like, they're cocky bastards. And, uh, and he just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spank you, boy. I'm going to spank you. And uh, I said, I'm going to bother you. You're not even going to last 10 hours. He said, buy you, buy you. And I said, yeah, buy fucking me. And, uh, and that was it. And he just, he just laughed and split. But it was, it was, it was kind of heated, but... I think it'll get a little more heated tomorrow. I mean, the press conference is coming up tomorrow and then obviously the weigh-in, so do you, uh, the expectation there, do you think it's going to get a little bit... Obviously, you know what fighters are like when they make yeah. weight, they're, they're cranky at the best of times. He's had, he had struggled a little a couple of times to make weight, so he might be a little bit extra cranky. You ready for that? Yeah, 100%. That's, that's what I love. I love that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, Monday we weren't, weren't too cranky because we haven't really cut weight yet, but by Thursday I'm sure we'll be very hot-headed and and ready to go at each other's throats. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. It gets me excited for fights. It gets me in the in the zone, so hopefully it does. A lot of people will say that uh, because you got this fight over Twitter, I mean, Twitter's a powerful platform. I mean, you basically made this fight yourself. You were a promoter yeah. on Twitter by yeah. calling out Progre, and the fight's here now. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are saying, how the heck did you get this fight? You don't deserve this fight. And because obviously, former world champion, you yet to reach the, them, them heights. But what do you say to these, these people that are saying these things about you? Listen, I have my whole career not had one promoter behind me. I've I've had MTK and that's it. And I've managed to get myself number 17 in box track. I'm in two governing bodies in the top 15 in the world. So to, to even get that far without a promoter is, is unbelievable. I haven't got someone in the background cherry picking me opponents and managed my career into, into an easy easy uh, world title. That's not the way my career's been. My career's been hard, gritty. Uh, my determination, me self-promoting on, on Twitter all the time. I mean, I've, I've done a lot, of, a lot of fights through social media and, and obviously with the back of MTK as well. So, man isn't, when people say I, I don't deserve this, how did I get this fight? I got this fight through deserving it, through them tough fights, through years and years of hard work, years of, of self-promotion. And it, it's very hard to get in the position I'm in without a promoter. So for me to do it, uh, you should respect that and realise that I actually I'm a talented, hard cunt who can, uh, who can mix up with anyone. You said it right there. Um, Regis is a talented, hard cunt himself, if, for lack of a better word from, from me, but he has shown that he's tough, he's durable, he's game, he's got power in both hands. He's uh, probably produced the fight of the year with Josh Taylor back in 2019, I believe it was. So it's going to be a tough task for you, and it's definitely 100% the toughest test so far in your professional career so what kind of fight are you expecting because I can remember after the O'Hara Davis lost you said I ain't boxing ever again it's war from here on out is that what we're getting? We'll, we'll see Saturday I mean he is very small compared to me um, I think the smart option would be to, to keep it long and, and box him not him near me And but as a, am, I, am I a smart boxer am I, am I a fighter am I going to go out and have a war um, it's something I love doing. I love having wars. I love getting in the center of the ring, slugging over ten rounds. It's where I'm most comfortable. Um, is it the smartest option? Probably not. But is it is it the option that I love? It's, it's yeah. I love blood all over my face. I love taking digs and giving digs and, and entertaining fans. And I've always said, especially after the Far Davies fight, that I'm not reverting back to boxing. I'm, I'm just going to wars, wars only. Um, but maybe we'll see different side of me on Saturday we'll see but I'm just, I'm just excited to get in there and, and do my thing and and uh, improve and, and the doubters are wrong and, and shock the world I mean it's it's a massive fight for me and I've trained like it's a massive fight I've, I've trained my bollocks off I've had unbelievable sparring I've, I've done everything correct this, fight, or this uh, camp um, so I know how difficult the task is I know how, how unbelievable it is um, but I know how good I am as well and I know I'm world class. I know a lot of people look at me and go, oh, he. Every, every time I fought, 
or, or through my career, the boys said, yeah, yeah, he's domestic level. And then I beat, I beat everyone domestic level. And then I said, no, nah, he's fringe European. And then I beat Mamoun, who's European champion. And then oh, he's, he's kind of fringe world level. And then boom, I'm beating, beating people out. So they keep on putting these bars and they keep on pu- uh, pushing past them. And, and this is going to be no different. People are laughing at me, saying oh, he shouldn't be in the ring with Progre. And they're going to see Saturday night, they're wrong. You mentioned there the underdog stats, but we've seen in the last few weeks that underdogs are coming through. I mean, Jack Carroll, Josh Taylor, Carroll was a slight underdog, and there's a lot of argument that he won that, that fight. I'll probably get your opinion on it later. And then obviously Lee Wood was a slight underdog against Mick Collin, and look what he produced at the weekend there. So underdogs can do it. I mean, it's, it's been happening. There has been a lot of upsets recently. Um, Gabusa as well. Um, I think there's been a few more. Just can't think of the top of my head. Um, Mickey Garcia got beat. Uh, like there, ha- it's been a year of the underdogs. It seems, or for the past six or seven months, and uh, I think it's been no different. I'm, I'm very, very confident. That. I've been as confident in the fight in a long while. I'm, I've trained my bollocks off, and I just think he suits me the way he fights, and I just can't see. I, I, I can just see a, a great exhibition of masterclass from me and, and surprising everyone. I, I mentioned Josh Taylor and Jack Carroll. I knew you were out sparring and Jack Carroll. It's a few weeks now, so the news is probably getting a little bit old. And this is the first time I've actually spoke about it because I wasn't at the fight. I just had a baby fight week. But did you watch the fight? And uh, just give me your, your thoughts on the whole thing. Listen, I'm uh, friends with Josh and Jack, so I've been trying to stay neutral on this. I watched the fight. It was a, it was a great exhibition from... Uh, from Jack Carroll, um, but there was a lot of close rounds, so I'm, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's good for me then. Uh, another fighter close to, close to you that you know very, very well is Mick Collin now. Yeah. What a fight at the weekend, probably the fight of the year and it's only, we're only at the March. Uh, the knockdown in the first round, the knockout in the 12th round, I mean, what a fight that was. Just your thoughts on Mick and obviously Lee Wood, because uh, your heart must go out to Mick. Yeah. 100% I, can, I know what he's going through right now he's probably in the depths of depression but uh, he should be proud because that was an unbelievable display I mean I think Mick showed showed all his ability and I feel like he, how good he actually is same first eight rounds he was unbelievable world class it's what everyone said he was going to be he was he was showing it um, his knockdown was unbelievable the, the first round I think I think that may have been the not the downfall of him but like he put a lot in the, the next eight rounds because he knew he could hurt him, he knew he could get him out of there and then he didn't, which is for, for dudes the, the Lee Wood and his, his toughness um, and then I think he just kind of didn't have the energy in the last last rounds that he should have had but he was unbelievable and it was an unbelievable fight and I always want to have the best most the biggest war in, uh, in, in Irish boxing and I think it's going to be hard to top that to be honest <laughs> When I remember doing a Zoom call with you when you, this fight was made, and you you literally promised me a war. Yeah. You said no. That's what you said to me. I promise you a war. So don't go back on your promise, man. Give me a war. <laughs> I think you don't have to say that to me. Um, once I get a one punch, I'll just be going the war zone. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, as much as it's going to be hard to, I'm going to try and top last week's war and fight of the year candidate. Um, and I think I could. Uh, it's all I'm making. So I mean. Progress and going to shy away from more. I'm not going to shy away from more and stand toe to toe in the middle of the ring and, and have an epic battle. One final one for me then. This is going out on Eurosport back home. I mean, there's going to be I don't know how many a thousand odd plus fans, maybe a little bit more in that arena. I'm not too I'm not too sure. So what can they expect from Tyrone McKenna? War. There we go. <laughs> Brut- brutality, blood, knockdowns. It's normally you do not want to miss this fight. Definitely, you heard it here from Tyrone. Absolute pleasure speaking to you. I just landed last night, so I'm a little bit tired. But can I can I get the socks in? Can you zo- yeah, scoot sc- 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 back a little bit? <laughs> scoot back a little bit. Let me see. Where are they? Yeah, pull them up. Look at that. There we go. Look, that's the fashion. That's the fashion, right there, guys. Listen, Ty. As always, it's a pleasure speaking yeah, to you, my man. And uh, go and lie in the sun, and get a tan, because that pasty Irish skin needs some work. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Cheers, Ty. Yeah.